Carrion Death takes us for a ride through the desert. Whether we come back or not is up to the birds. Written and directed by Stephen E. De Souza and shot by Robert Draper. Based on a story from Shock Suspense Stories number 9. The show takes an already cold-blooded story and drains every last drop of mercy from its veins. Escaped serial killer Earl Raymond Diggs has just robbed a bank, killing again in the process. He's driving through the desert towards Mexico when a state trooper on a motorcycle gives chase. It's full speed ahead in the comic, but in the show, this cop is shooting first and asking questions never. In an attempt to make the trooper crash, Earl suddenly slams on his brakes in mid-chase. Instead, he sends his own car hurling, propelling him through the windshield. Things are more antagonistic in the episode, as the two play an intense game of chicken with explosive results. Earl picks himself up from the wreckage, still determined to make it to Mexico. He spots the dead trooper, or at least he thinks he's dead, and proceeds to map out his plan. The vultures are already curious. Earl begins his trek. The cop, not letting the crash get in his way, follows. The game of cat and mouse begins. In the comic, Earl awakens to the sound of the trooper on his radio, giving their location. The car and money are ablaze and Earl is handcuffed to the trooper, who conveniently reports that he doesn't have his master key. To Earl's advantage, the state trooper thinks he's still knocked out. He attacks the trooper and manages to strangle him to death without realizing there is no key to set him free. He is now handcuffed to a corpse, and he can see the cops appearing in the distance. His only chance of getting away is to throw the dead man over his shoulders and try his luck in the desert. The show continues to draw out the chase. Earl finds an abandoned tavern. He's out of luck as there isn't a drink in the house. Plus, the trooper sucker punches him. The two fight it out, and it's pretty evenly matched, until the cop slaps the handcuffs onto Earl's wrist, and his own. Earl takes a gun and shoots the cop in the chest. With his dying breath, the state trooper swallows the keys for the handcuffs. Back to the comic where Earl hides behind a rock and searches his pockets for his knife so he can cut the body loose. But the trooper removed his personal effects while he was knocked out. He goes further into the desert. He doesn't sleep that first night. He just keeps going. Until morning comes and he collapses. He needs water or else he will die from dehydration. With the dead body hoisted upon his shoulders, the show's Earl continues his journey to Mexico. It doesn't take him long to realize that carrying the dead weight of a man you just killed through miles of scorching desert isn't easy. The sun sets and the wind picks up. Earl wakes up from using the trooper's body as a shield from the elements. Things are finally looking up as he climbs a hill at the edge of the Mexican border, only to be pulled back down by a dead man. Getting desperate to separate himself from the trooper, Earl tries to use the policeman's badge to cut him off. The show's Earl even fashions a makeshift axe out of the badge. As the comic's Earl cuts into the body, the sight of the exposed muscles makes him queasy, and in his disgust, he loses his grip on the badge, dropping it down a crevice. That is when the buzzards appear above. He attempts to run from them, but they follow his every move. He runs until he can run no more. He passes out to the sounds of the vultures screeching. It is night when he wakes up to the sight of vultures feeding upon the dead trooper. He chases them away and forces himself to stay awake to fend off any returning birds. The body is starting to smell. Trudging through the hot, burning sun and bearing another sleepless, cold night, Earl comes up with a desperate plan. He is going to let the vultures eat the dead trooper to finally set him free. He closes his eyes as the vultures descend and claw at the body. He opens his eyes to find nothing more than a skeleton. Earl doesn't move. He doesn't scream. Even when the birds turn to him, they start tearing the skin from his bones. He helplessly watches as a vulture plucks his eyes out, for he is already dead. Earl isn't so lucky in the show. Delirious from dehydration, he swings the badge axe and misses, cutting through his own wrist. He stumbles backwards off a cliff, and his fate just has to be seen to be believed. <laughs> Ah! 
His hand gone, neck bent out of shape, and unable to move, Earl shouts for help. The only thing for Miles to hear his cries is a hungry vulture. Carrie and Death is a vicious story, and both versions have their own advantage over the other. The extended chase from the show creates an air of hatred around everything the characters do, and I love that the state trooper swallows the keys as a final screw you to Earl, rather than the key being lost from the start. I do wish we had more time with Earl braving the hot sun while dealing with the rotting corpse. It's more than halfway through the show before the handcuffs come out, but there are plenty of obstacles afterwards to make up for the short amount of screen time. The comic can't wait to make us feel the misery. The comic also doesn't actually give our protagonist a name, and his narration, especially at the end, drives the madness deeper and deeper as the dead body rots. You could argue that Earl and the cop talking to themselves creates a degree of silliness for the show, but I didn't mind it. You again. <sighs> you piece of feathered shit. <sighs> Just waiting around for me to drop, aren't you? Why didn't you go after that cop when he was flat on his back, huh? Made my life a lot easier. No! Guess you're chicken, Vulture. <laughs> I think I better keep my eye on you. Kyle McLaughlin disappears into the role. I forgot I was watching an actor. However, there is one thing that without a doubt makes the TV episode a masterpiece. The vultures themselves. Or rather, the one singular vulture. From the moment the two men crash in the desert, the vulture is a constant audience to their struggle, completely uncaring for what happens to who. It just wants to eat. Nature is indeed cruel. Uh, 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 I'm not! Ah! 